1.1 reads, the acceleration due to gravity on Earth is greater than that on the Moon. Which one of the following statements is correct? The correct answer here is option B, that is the mass of the object on Earth is the same as that on the Moon. The formula for the force of gravity or the weight force acting on an object is always the same. It is the product of the mass of that object and the gravitational acceleration of that planet. So on Earth, we know that that is 9.8. On the Moon, it is less, which means that the weight of an object on the Moon will be less than that on Earth. But the mass, which is the amount of matter that makes up an object, will be constant no matter where that object is in the universe. 1.2 reads, the force diagram below shows the forces acting on a box. Which one of the following equations for the magnitude of the normal force is correct? And so we can see that there is a weight force or a force of gravity that is acting downward on this object. There's the normal force of the surface pushing upward on the object. And then there's an applied force that is acting at an angle on this object. Now, what we need to realize here is that this applied force has two components. There is a vertical component of that applied force that is also going to be acting essentially with the normal force against the force of gravity. So what we need to do is we need to calculate the magnitude of that vertical component of the applied force. And we do that by seeing that in this triangle here, the applied force is on the opposite side of the triangle. And so we can say that if a vertical, the vertical component of the applied force is equal to if a sine of theta, we are using sine here because sine theta is always our opposite side of the triangle over the hypotenuse of that triangle. What we then need to see is that there are now essentially two forces acting upward on this object, those being the normal force as well as the vertical component of the applied force. And since this object is not sinking into the ground or lifting up off the ground, we then say that the force of gravity acting downward or the weight force acting downward on this object must be equal to the sum of the normal force and that applied vertical force. And so we can then rewrite this as our weight force is equal to our normal force plus that is if a or if sine theta and all of these have been written with n as the subject of the expression and so we rewrite that as n is equal to w minus f sine theta which means that our correct answer here is option d again we do this because it is the force of gravity acting downward on this object that is countered or acted against by our normal force and the vertical component of the applied force. 1.3 reads, a stone is projected vertically upwards from the top of a building at a speed of V meters per second. The position time graph below represents the motion of the stone. Ignore the effects of air resistance, which one of the combinations below regarding the magnitudes of the stone's velocity and acceleration at time T1 is correct. Now, important to realize here that this stone is a projectile from the moment that it is released and for the duration of its motion, which means that it has constantly got the force of gravity acting downward on it, which means that its acceleration is always going to be 9.8 meters per second per second downward for as long as it is a projectile. So our only correct options here are options A or D. Now what we need to see is that at time T1, where the displacement of this object or the position of this object is the maximum positive distance from where it started, that must mean that this over here is at the maximum height. So at its maximum height at time T1, and we know that at that time is when the velocity goes from being positive to being negative, and it temporarily will have a velocity of zero, which means that our correct answer here is option A, because the acceleration of a projectile is always 9.8 meters per second per second, and at its maximum height, the velocity will instantaneously be zero.
1.4 reads, a trolley of mass M is moving at constant velocity V to the right on a frictionless horizontal surface. A ball of clay, also mass M, dropped vertically, falls onto the trolley at time T as shown in the diagram below. The ball of clay sticks to the trolley. Which one of the velocity time graph below correctly represents the velocity of the trolley before and after time T? And so what's important to see here is that momentum must still be conserved, which means that the sum of momentum before this collision is equal to the sum of the momentum after the collision. And where initially the trolley has a mass M and a velocity V, the ball of clay has a mass M and a velocity of zero, that ball of clay is not moving horizontally. And at the end, what we find is that the trolley and the ball have combined their masses and they will have some final velocity. What's important to see here is that we end up with a formula MV is equal to 2 MVF, which allows us then to solve to find that VF is equal to one half V, which means that the velocity is halved. This should logically make sense since the mass of the trolley doubled in order for the momentum to remain the same, the velocity must have halved. And so then using that, we can see that option C is the only correct answer because what we see is the velocity goes from a velocity of V to a velocity of one half V at time T. One point five reads: A person lifts a crate vertically upwards at a constant velocity through a distance h. The person does work x on the crate in time t. The person now lifts the same crate vertically upwards at constant velocity through the same distance, but in time two t. The work done by the person on the crate will now be, and we need to realize here that work is simply the product of force and displacement. There is no time constant in this formula. And so since there is no time constant in this formula, the time in which the work is done does not affect the amount of work that is done. So the amount of work that is done remains the same. It remains that amount X. However, if the question had asked what the power would be, because power refers to the amount of work divided by the amount of time, then changing the time would affect the power. 1.6 reads, the wavelengths of light emitted by a distant star appear shorter when observed from Earth. From this, we can conclude that the star is, and this applies to the Doppler effect, or the Doppler effect applies here, where we know that when an object is moving towards the observer as it emits the sound, those sound waves essentially bunch up and get closer together which means that the wavelength would then decrease. And so when the wavelength of light decreases, we know that blue light is on the shorter end of the spectrum. So we say that the light is blue shifted. And this only happens if the star is moving toward the Earth. And that means that the correct answer here is option A. 1.7 reads, two identical light graphite coated spheres, P1 and P2 are suspended using identical thin insulated threads. P1 is charged, but P2 is neutral. The spheres are then brought into contact with each other as shown in diagram one. Thereafter, the spheres assume the positions as shown in diagram two. Which one of the following statements concerning the charges on the spheres possibly explains why the spheres move apart after touching as shown in diagram one. And there's two things that we need to realize. The first is that in diagram two, we can clearly see that these spheres are repelling each other. Each sphere is pushing away from the other. And that must mean that these are like charges. The spheres are like charges. The second thing that we need to remember is that when two objects are brought into contact, the new charge on both objects is equal to the sum of those two charges divided by two, essentially saying, or well, we call this charge sharing, which means that both of them are not only the same polarity being positive or negative, but that they are also the same magnitudes. And so we are looking for objects that have 
equal magnitude, so option C or D are only correct answers, and they must have like charges, and option D is the only one where there are like charges with equal magnitudes, and so option D is the correct answer there. 1.8 reads, when a resistor of resistance R is connected to a battery of EMF E and negligible internal resistance, the power dissipated in the resistor is P. If the resistor is replaced with a resistor of resistance 2R, without changing the battery, the power dissipated will be. Now, what's important to do is use the correct formula here for power. And the correct formula in this case is the power dissipated is equal to the voltage provided over the resistance squared. The reason we do not use the formula P is equal to I squared times R is because when the resistance is changed in this example, the current is going to change. And so this formula cannot work. However, since we have been told that without changing the battery, that means that the voltage provided in this scenario is going to remain the same. So we say that the original resistance is equal to V squared over R. And, and we say that our new power, the original power is V squared over R. The new power is equal to still V squared because it's the same battery, but now it is 2R because we were told the resistance doubled, which we can simplify to one half V squared over R. And we can then say that this over here, the V squared over R is exactly the same as our original term. And so our new power is one half times the original power. And so our correct answer there is then option B. Again, we have chosen to use this formula because the voltage of the battery remains the same and only the resistance is changing. And so we can then compare the power dissipated in each of these circuits. 1.9 reads, the diagram below shows a current carrying conductor lying in a uniform magnetic field directed to the right. The current flows into the page. Which one of the following arrows shows the direction of the force experienced by a conductor due to the magnetic field? And what we need to see here is that we are inducing a force, which means that this is essentially a motor. And because this is a motor, we are going to use our left hand motor rule to determine the direction of the force. And we do that by pointing our index finger in the direction of the magnetic field, that being from left to right. We point our middle finger in the direction of the current that is into the page. And then our thumb will point in the direction of the force. And using our left hand, we see that the force is then downward. So the correct answer is then C. 1.10 reads, light of a certain frequency is shone onto a metal M and electrons are ejected from the surface. The same source of light is shone onto another metal N. The electrons ejected from the surface of metal N have a much higher kinetic energy than that from metal M. This means that, and so we use our formula here that the photon energy is equal to the sum of the work function of the metal plus the kinetic energy of that specific metal. So what we find is that for N, the kinetic energy is higher. And what that must mean is that since it is the same light that is shone onto both surfaces, the only way that the kinetic energy for N can be higher is if the work function for N is lower because the work function for N being lower would imply then that there's more energy available to become kinetic energy in those electrons. And so by looking at our options here, we see that option A and option B are not correct because those both relate to the work function for M being higher than that of N. And then the next two refer to the threshold frequency, which we remember threshold frequency is the product of Planck's constant and the, the work function is the product of Planck's constant and threshold frequency. And so when we say that the work function for N is lower, that means automatically that the threshold frequency for N is lower, which means then that the correct answer is option D.